the SNP plots with the European Union to fight against Britain, and Nicola Sturgeon plans to take Boris Johnson to court over Scottish independence. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the day. This is the update that we have from yesterday, uh, the issue between the SNP and Westminster government and what the European Union is doing in the middle of all this with the AstraZeneca row because Nicola Sturgeon has been helping the European Union and wants to even help them further. The latest that we have from the Times is uh, how Nicola Sturgeon is now threatening to publish the sensitive uh, information on the UK supply and the, the stock that we have from AstraZeneca, Pfizer and all the others, uh, uh, which will um, allow the European Union to know how many doses we have in this country uh, so that they could make a move against us. At first, this got as escalated because she already published something, a document, then she was forced to withdraw it because Westminster kicked off and now she's uh, you know, giving a massive warning to the UK government saying that I'm going to do it again. Now we know uh, that uh, she's undermining the efforts to prevent the European Union from taking the UK's uh, vaccine stock by publishing these uh, sensitive, confidential information on our supplies. But the UK government, as I said, wants to keep them secret because they don't want the EU to know uh, about our situation. The problem is that a document was already released by the Scottish government revealing the scale of the UK stocks of the AstraZeneca Oxford uh, vaccine this month. Now, um, Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has insisted that she would resume the publication of these supply details. Why? Why was she even thinking about uh, creating more division uh, as if we don't have enough problems right now with everything, all the rows that we have? She now wants to make more problems because instability helps the SNP's cause of, uh, they say independence, I say isolation. That's all they care about. The issue that we have, even the Mail has been um, given an update on this issue because um, the European Commission have said that AstraZeneca is obliged to meet the con a contractual agreement to supply the vaccines to the EU. Sure, but we know already the issue with the contracts between the EU and AstraZeneca. We've already talked about that on this channel. The problem is that the EU's health commissioner insists that the UK should not receive priority despite placing the orders a month before the European Union did. This is exactly why we don't want them to know about our situation because there are a bunch of you know, protectionists who try to, and basically like pirates, try to take our doses. And uh, Nicola Sturgeon should not publish these inf this confidential information. Westminster should take away her powers. She should not be allowed to be in charge of this program because she's not acting in the interest of the whole of the UK. She's only concerned about her own agenda with the SNP. This is why even the National has now published her Plan B. So, so they had this referendum back in 2014. They lost the referendum. The majority of people in Scotland voted to remain in the, Euro in the United Kingdom. Now they want to have a different way to deliver their isolationist plan. So she has been discussing this uh, you know, new idea with the audience of Irish Times readers uh, on, I think it was a Zoom call, it was online. And uh, the plan is that uh, the SM if the SNP win the next election in May, the upcoming election, then they will ask the UK government to either agree as a Section 30 order request uh, to have the referendum and independence, or to agree uh, to uh, the Holyrood legislating to hold the independence vote separately. So the second one is basically having the SNP government to have their own independence uh, vote without the consent of Westminster, basically. They say that if Boris Johnson refuses to accept this, then it will be up to him to challenge that legislation at the UK Supreme Court. So they're going to do it regardless of what's, uh, what everybody else in the UK thinks, or at least almost half of the people in Scotland. They're just going to do this anyway, regardless of any of that. So this is the SNP that we're dealing with. Nicola Sturgeon you know, is, is actually, could be potentially seeing the final days of her reign, because in February, in the next couple of weeks, Alex Salmon is going to be giving another testimony. She's going to be answering a lot of questions. If it's been proven that she has lied to, Europe, to the Scottish Parliament about the Alex Salmon inquiry, then she's going to have to stand down as First Minister. She's going to have to resign as the leader of the SNP. And then this could be the end of the recent wave of these Scottish nationalists trying to ruin our country. Because without Nicola Sturgeon, this whole thing has been a one-man band. They don't have anyone else. I mean, who do you think they're going to have? Ian Blackford is going to be the leader? 
do you really think people in Scotland are going to listen to him? Not going to happen. That's the latest that we have from, from uh, the SNP and the European Union. It's been completely embarrassing. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys now is, um, as you know, every Wednesday we have a, an on online discussion, a, you know, a video call session with the members of the channel. Uh, so if you want to become a member, check out the link in the description or find the join button next to subscribe. And I'm going to show you a highlight of the discussion we had with a, a, a small group of the members that we have. Every Wednesday we have a small group so that everybody gets a chance to actually have a chat ha and have the questions that they have. Uh, so yeah, let's watch this because we discussed all the issues that we had this week with uh, the European Union, AstraZeneca and a number of other issues. Uh, watch that one, we'll come back. Uh, yeah. They're playing politics with it, aren't they? So no, unfortunately, mm. that's, um, that's what happens. Which you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, such a shambles, but it's also, I mean, the thing is, I feel so bad for the people in these other European countries. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, like there's, it, it's, it's like a, a big sort of like boost mark for Brexit, but at mm -hmm. the same time, like you, I, I, cause I feel so bad because it's not, you know, the fault of, you know, the Italian people, the French people, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, um, it's the shambles of the EU. Yeah. And it, it, absolutely. I think the biggest, biggest problem was that it was initially, as I said in the videos um, yesterday and today, France, Italy, Netherlands, and Germany decided to do their own contracts first. Mm. The EU said, no, no, I should, we should be in charge. We'll do it on your behalf, and it will be fine. But then they lied. And now, as um, obviously Chris said, um, you know, people's lives are at risk in Europe. So the I point I can't get from it is that we've got two uh, AstraZeneca plants in the UK that are producing, yep. and they've got three in Europe that are producing, plus the Pfizer, plus the, the Moderna down in uh, Switzerland. Yes. So they, they, they've got five plants to our two. Yeah. They, uh, and they want our stuff as well. The thing there, Chris, of course, is that uh, he is getting a lot of stick. But I think Scotland's got about 400,000 unused vaccines that uh, the uh, SNP haven't uh, got a grip of yet. Yeah, completely. Oh, Andrew, are you, are you the one that lives in Carlisle? Um, I, I am from Carlisle. Uh, yeah, Tim, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't live there now. Uh, I live in Surrey. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember you from the last time we. Yeah, we I got, remember yeah. you with different hair. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. I. I yeah. Where's where it gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was my uh, Bob Dylan blonde on blonde look. <laughs> yeah. I, I decided I don't want to get rid of that. So. Yeah. From what I've heard, um, the EU didn't actually place an order with AstraZeneca; just a letter of intent. Yep, yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah. then von der Leyen's banging on saying you have to fulfill your contract. Well, there isn't one. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know it's true because even, even with the letter, AstraZeneca still tried their best to deliver. They're like, okay, fine, we, we, we're assuming that's what they mean. And, but they were still delayed in the process because of that. Uh, and so three months delay because they stopped the other countries and they said, we're going to do it on your behalf. And then this happened. And uh, then mm -hmm. their own bureaucracy. And then they wonder why everyone's now attacking them. So I, I don't understand how long, how long will it take for European citizens to actually rise up against this mismanagement? By email, I got um, a survey from the BBC. Oh, really? Asking me what I thought of them. And a lot of the questions, you had to rate things, what you thought of them. And then there were some comment boxes. Oh, one of the questions was, do you think we're the same, less bias or more bias? Than and of what? course, I said that they were more biased. Oh, yeah. I mean, why? And they then he yeah. asked me for comments of what I thought about them. So I just sort of parroted what Alex Belfield says. I said there was champagne sipping, quiche eating, Guardian <laughs> reading, snowflakes. <laughs> oh, that would amuse somebody when they're collating all the comments. I, oh. I got an email from that, Lynn, and it said we may or we may not use your uh, your comments but if we don't use them you uh, they will just be deleted i thought yeah that'd yeah be that's, deleted. that's a lie oh, that's <laughs> mine, then. deleted yeah are you in wales um, though chris chris i'm not no i'm i'm in um i'm in harfordshire yeah, well, actually, that was, that was my i'm I'm, uh, in I'm actually in wales yeah the, the other chris is in wales yeah it could be yeah. a sort of devolved thing um yeah i i do not believe in it one bit whatsoever um kind yeah. of hoping at some point uh we could actually have some form of well either reform or just get rid of it altogether but but, but i think yours would be quite interesting because i don't yeah. know how much you can remember of what you were in, in iran 
yep, yep. Um, no, no, yeah, and, yeah, and, right. and then and then what you, it was like where you were growing up, and yep. then we'll look at, I think for you, how you got into this um, YouTube in Malarkey. Alcoholism, yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. How um, old were you when you came to, to England? Uh, about that going on. About, yeah, oh, he's on whiskey. Uh, I think I was about 13, 12, 13. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I thought you were a lot younger than that when you came with your mum. I was still young. <laughs> no, no, <yeah. laughs> and, uh, old, old enough to remember both sides, both systems. Uh, that's why you kind of. Um, actually, I am planning. While well, I'm saying this, for the past two years, I've been planning to write a book, uh, a political book. But it's not going to be. It's going to be political issues, all the different categories of like you know, areas of politics. But it's going to be more of a storytelling because I want to do flashbacks compare like when I was a kid, like in you know, education, schools, compare what was it like in Iran and what it is in the West. Uh, so yeah, amazing. Yeah, deep chapter. Um, so eventually, <laughs> when I actually start writing. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll buy it. Yeah, there you go. Be better. <laughs> 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 no, I'll, yeah, I'll be, the members will get a discount, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to book about it on the side. <laughs> No, uh, no, thanks again, everyone. Um, hopefully, I'll, um, yeah, we'll catch up soon. And then, Tim, um, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't forget no, the other one. Yeah, Tim Hill. Uh, don't forget to forward me the email. And uh, oh, yeah. the, the other team, Andrew, I'm going to go on Facebook, so find your names and accept the friendship. Don't worry. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great and night. I can send you stuff from Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, do that. Perfect. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Cheers. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. As I said, if you want to become a member and get all these perks and benefits, and we're also going to introduce Discord. It's a messaging board where you're going to actually, we're going to create a proper community where I'll be there, Lacey will be there. You guys could directly chat to us and members will get an exclusive channel, but it will be open to everybody else. So become a member, support the channel and 8.30. So literally, if you're watching this around 8 p.m. now, which has been published, 8.30, we're going to have our live stream as usual on Saturdays. So join us there. I'll see you guys on the other side.